had some health, health issues over the last month or two. And I want to say, first, right off the bat, thank you to all the people who felt the need to send me unsolicited medical advice. It seems as though that's the first thing on the, on the internet that people want to do. When they say so, someone says someone has, oh, I have a headache, or I haven't been feeling well, or I have a toothache, or I have a tummy ache. They always want to be, oh, well, this holistic thing worked for me. They always want to like volunteer stuff, which I get it. I get it. We, as human beings, we want to tell other people what we think they should do. We feel we know what's best for everyone else in their life. That's just part of human nature. That's part of definitely human internet culture. People judging other people sight unseen and giving unsolicited advice. And uh, if someone says, well, you know, thank you, but no thank you. I'm not asking for advice. Then the person that offered the advice suddenly gets offended. It's, it's hilarious to me in, in a sense that it's like someone coming onto your porch and saying, you know what? This statue should go over there by your door. I'm going to put this here because I think it should go there because it works for my back porch. So it's going to work for your back porch because your back porch is statue lacking, bro. And you just come onto my porch and put the statue there. And I say, I didn't ask for a statue. Did anybody ask for the damn statue? No, nobody asked for it. So I appreciate your opinion. But here, take your statue and uh, and leave. I, I don't need that. Thank you. No, thank you. Then they get angry. Then they bust the statue and they yell at you and they call you, you're an egomaniac and just trying to help. And uh, Bro, I don't need your help. If I need help, I'll ask for help. That's the way it works. That's contract. Contract is by consent. Always keep that in mind. And I think that is an issue that people have with learning correct sentence structure is cognizing the fact that human beings, for whatever reason, maybe it's programmed into us. I don't know. We just want, we just feel we know what's best for everybody else. What we think they should do. <clears throat> great example. Great example. I got to use this example. Because I just overheard this a few days ago, I have a, I guess you could say, I have a family member who's very young, maybe nine years old, eight years old, and he's in wrestling. He loves to wrestle, okay? And <laughs> his grandmother, I overheard his grandmother having a conversation with his mother and his grandmother, who has not wrestled one day in her life, never been on the mat, nothing. She's gone to see a couple wrestling meets, that's about all, but she's never been in the trenches, doesn't know the techniques, doesn't know the mentality that behind it, goes on for about 30 minutes telling this kid's mother what he should do to be a successful wrestler what they should do, how they should talk to the coaches, and so on and so forth. It blows my mind that people are so presumptive to think that they have a position to offer anyone else in life any advice without being asked. Now, some of you out there listening to me right now may feel like you're getting some sort of lecture or whatever. See, the difference is you're choosing to be here. And as I can see by my view count, the view count was at 10, and when I started talking about this, now the view count dropped to 3. So it's obviously an uncomfortable thing that a lot of people don't want to hear. But again, I'm saying that is a sticking point with people learning correct sentence structure, knowing what a trespass is. Yeah, you may have all the well wishes in the world. You may mean the best for someone. You, you don't mean any harm. You just want to help them. Did they freaking ask you? No, they didn't. So unless you know them personally, unless you have some kind of trust count with them, like for example, if I have a relative or a friend that I know very well and I've known for many years and we know and trust each other, we know each other's personalities, if they don't ask for help and they're having a problem, 
I might just overstep that bound and come into it on the level of friendship, meaning we know each other, each other we are friends, and we are aboard a ship, and give help without being asked. That's a judgment call on my part. I have chosen to do that. What I'm talking about are complete strangers on the internet taking that same liberty with people they don't know. Does that make any sense? No. So it's the same thing with the trespass in the fiction system, how the fiction system will trespass upon people under the presumption assumption that the fiction system has some sort of authority over you, therefore they can tell you what to do, tell you to pay money, <clears throat> tell you to get out of your house, take your children from you. They presume to have that authority. And it's all tied into the birth certificate system, legal system, it's all paperwork. It's a paper trail, you can follow it if you get yourself some education. And outside of that, with correct sentence structure, it's completely different. It's completely different outside of that system. I cultivate calmness and peace and tranquility. That's what I cultivate. And that's the way I vet a lot of people as well. When they come to me, they want to learn. Usually the people that come to me that want to learn that are in the middle of court cases are very poor candidates to learn correct sentence structure. Very poor in the fact that they're going to start at, if I do consent to them taking a workshop, if I do agree with it, <clears throat> soon they will be asking for extras. They'll be asking me to do meetings outside of the scheduled time. They'll ask for pro bono work. They'll just want my opinion on this or that, how to do documents. They try and do everything out of order or the way that I've set it up. And I have gone outside of those guidelines once or twice. And every time I've gone out, it's ended badly. It usually ends up with the person on the other end blaming me for everything, blaming me for their lack of knowledge, for their lack of experience, they're the ones that wanted to take the shortcut, and then they blame me for, I guess what, letting them take the shortcut? Even after I tell them, look, you're, you're, you're not doing this right, bro. You don't have enough knowledge. You don't have the correct psychological condition of mind to do this. Because a lot of these people too, and I can think of one recently here, literally said to me, when I walk into that court, I want them to be afraid of me. I want them to run. It's like, holy cow, that is not correct psychology with correct sentence structure. That is not peace and neutrality. I'm not talking about what the other individual is doing or not doing. I'm talking about you. Your mindset has to be peaceful and neutral with no malicious intent. If you're walking into some place and you want people to be afraid of you, that's a bully. That is a bully mentality. Hate to tell you, bro, it's a bully mentality. And that is why these individuals are not successful. That's why they keep having problems. And then they shift the blame off to someone like me or someone else. Or they may even put it down to God's plan. Who knows? A lot of them are religious as well. So... That is definitely my rule for 2024. Very strict and stringent on the people that I contract with. I'm going further into the private and confidential. And I'm only going to contract with people who are peaceful and neutral. Their lives are not chaotic. They're pretty much set with what they're doing. It's like, you know, I've had a few people contact me who claim... Oh, they were homeless and things like that. And I'm so em empa empathetic towards people like that. Um, in those situations, it's it breaks my heart to think about that. You know, because I've been in those situations in the past. I've been near those situations. I've been threatened with those situations. And it's not fun. It is not fun. <clears throat> 
But what ends up happening with individuals like that is that, of course, they can't, they cannot perform with rule one, rule equal. They want everything given to them. So my answer to them, if you want to learn this channel, there is an option for you. Or I'm sorry, if you want to learn this grammar, there is an option for you. Study the YouTube channel. That's why I put every damn thing I know about correct sentence structure mechanics on my YouTube channel. There's nothing secret or hidden. It's all out in the public for you. If you can't donate a gift of value to participate in one of my correct sentence structure classes, more than welcome to learn the same material at your own pace for free on this channel. Hey brother, I hope you're feeling better. I think someone sharing their problem and pain is an open invitation for help and advice. Hold on, I lost it, sorry. Otherwise, it's just a story. Well, Razvan, it sounds like you're participating with an assumption and a presumption there. You're presuming that if someone's sharing a story about pain, now you're, you're piling on top of that. Oh, they're asking for help. You know what asking for help is? It's when someone says, hey, Razvan, I have a toothache. Will you help me? Can you help me? Do you have advice? Now it's very clear what's going on. But if I say, Razvan, I have a toothache. And you know what? The holiday season's coming up and blah, blah, blah. I just say that you projecting into that, that I'm asking you for help is a presumption and assumption on your part. And again, this is a huge obstacle in people learning correct sentence structure. Huge obstacle. They just continue to presume and assume no matter how many times I say, you've got to take that out of it. That's a trespass. No matter how well-intentioned your volition is, it's still a trespass. It still gets put in the trespass uh, column there. <laughs> so, Razvad, I appreciate your comment, brother. I'm telling you flat out, that is a trespass, and that's you projecting an assumption presumption onto someone else um, that you may or may not know, but it's still... A presumption to say that if you read a comment or watch a video and someone says that they're in pain that and they don't say anything else they just say they're in pain and then they go on to talk about something else you're presuming that that's asking for help that's exactly what it is it's a presumption and it's a trespass and i clarified that earlier by saying there are certain situations and conditions where one could construe that as asking for help if you personally and intimately deeply know that person and have a trust count with them on a personal day-to-day -day basis. You've been around that person for years. You've been in their physical presence. You know their personality. Then you can say, okay, they didn't ask for help, but I know they're asking for help because I know them because they're my brother. They're my cousin. They're my best friend that I've been around in the same town every day for 20 years. I know them. So that's a good judgment call on my part. But if it's someone you, you've never been around physically, first of all, there's no way for you to know that. So that's definitely an assumption presumption. I have empathy for people, but it's definitely not <coughs> fake empathy or... Uh, condescending empathy and I certainly don't use it as a weapon I'm very conscious of that there's a lot of uh, new agers out there do they even call them that anymore I don't know they just talk in a sugary tone telling people what they should do with their lives and I can't even listen to it because it makes me a headache and that's one thing I've learned from my brother Raven and I'll just put this out there on a personal level. Of course, nothing trespassing upon his uh, confidentiality, but not but, <clears throat> but negates what comes before it. Not trespassing on his confidentiality. Rather, what I'm doing is sharing something personal for myself that I've learned from Raven. Is that I can tell Raven some of the most terrible personal things about me Terrible in the sense of like, 
events happening, traumatic events, illnesses, sicknesses, whatever, trials, tribulations of the personal life. And he will not offer any word of advice, but rather he will offer words of encouragement. And if I ask him for advice, he will double check to make sure that's what I'm doing in some way, shape or form. And then he will offer some solutions if I want them. And if I want to, him to explain them, then he'll go into more depth. But he never trespasses on it. And that's definitely yet another thing I've learned from him. And I've implemented it into correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, teaching. And it can only add to the success. Giving things for free is actually devaluing the interest of the recipient. No, Rosvan, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's a trespass. Meaning, if someone, it's like you, okay, for example, if you have closure, oh, no. <laughs> Stop and correct. Take that out. Here's an example. Me. As a correct sentence structure teacher, I walk outside my door and I walk up to my neighbor's door and I knock on that door and they open the door and I say, have you heard the good news about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar? And I just barge into their house and I say, you know, you need this because I saw, I saw a process server outside your house and, and, I know, and I know you need this in your life and this is what you need to do and I'm going to teach it to you right here, right now. Even though you didn't freaking ask me to do it, here I am in your house teaching you, and uh, that's kind of what it's like. That's not devaluing the recipient. That's trespassing. That's a presumption assumption. I'm presuming that they need that based upon something that I witness, even though I don't really know them. I'm presuming that's what they need. <clears throat> that's wrong. In the context of what I teach here with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, void of presumption, assumption. People who go around think, think about this, Rosvon, and I'm not picking on you or anybody else, but I know you can take it, brother, even if I was, which I'm not. <laughs> A lot of people try to say that they want to learn correct sentence structure to help people. But I find out in the end that's not really why they want to learn it, because they never end up learning it. Because that's not the correct reason to learn it for them because they just want to learn it to help other people for an ego boost. It makes them, it builds them up to help people. So that's why you have all these self-help gurus on the internet, just like the, the Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever that come to your door that think you need Jesus Christ. They're assuming that you need Jesus Christ in your life. Well, did I just totally blow that? Which, I, there's so many of those people out there. The Mormons, the Latter-day Saints, the Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't, I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're down with Cheez-Its or not, but whatever. They think you need their religion in your life. And so they're trespassing on your front porch, even though you didn't ask them to do it. It's the same thing exact same thing and people it just makes them feel better to think they're doing the lord's work there's a lot of groups out there a lot of cult groups out there that are like that especially uh connected with what i call channeling <clears throat> i was actually involved in one of those groups many many years ago in my questing days and I found out how cult-like that, that stuff actually is. It's all based on an assumption, presumption of channeling some otherworldly entity that can't possibly be certified. But that's another story for another day. This channel is not about that. It's not about presumption and assumption. It's about facts. It's about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Uh, hope you're on the mend. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. For the gratitude of this student is with the knowledge cultivation by the participation. 
for the participation of the knowledge cultivation is with the student by the gratitude. Well done, Dharma Science Radio. Two thumbs up. Gold star for you. Great sentence. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I'm glad to see so many people here. It really fluctuated. It feels so uncomfortable to stop all presumptions at the root. Don't know why. Raven has a great strategy for good communication etiquette. Well, you, Roswell, here's one thing, man. You have to trust that each individual is capable of their own. Each adult, each adult individual is more than capable of navigating their own vessel as master and commander of their vessel that they can make their own mistakes, make their own choices. They can ask for help, yeah. They can ask for help and you can help them. But if they don't ask for help, if you offer help, like not help, but if you offer unsolicited counsel or advice to them when they haven't asked for it, That does more harm than good. It's like in religion. When you get these people that want to pray for something or someone. To me, it's so condescending just in the context of religion and the omnipotent Godhead that, that those people believe in. Number one, if you're praying for an event to happen, you're basically telling your Godhead that their plan isn't good enough that just letting things happen the way they're supposed to happen, i.e. God's plan, isn't good enough. You think you know better than God. You want them to change their plan for you, for your little prayer. It's kind of like the same thing. Or if someone says they're going to pray for me because I don't feel good, they're going to pray for me to get better. Like, like I need that help. You know, like I don't know what's best for me. I don't know how to make myself better. I'm over 50 years old. I don't have that kind of experience. Treat me like a five-year-old, please. You know? <laughs> I think it's who we share the link with. I post and share in channels with big audience or passionate audience. Richard Vobes, for example. Oh, uh, Jason, I was thinking more in line of people that you know personally or have a relationship with like uh, online, you're friends with, you communicate with, your, you know, your, what, what you share material with on a personal level. I'm not talking about like big channels. I'm not, I mean, cool if you want to do that, that's fine, but I don't really see any activity or movement happening on that end because they're all very dismissive of this stuff because they don't know shit about it. But if you share it with people that you know personally, and you can sort of give them a personal uh, position on it. They're more likely to subscribe than some big name person who doesn't need a quantum grammar channel with 5,000 some subscribers. Because that's the first thing they're going to look at is the sub count. Like, okay, why should I share this link? Why should I mention this channel? They've been on here since February of 2018. They only have 500, 5,500 subscribers. So what's wrong with this picture? I don't know nothing about this. Wikipedia says it's a scam. So why, why would they share it? You know what I mean? That's the way I think about it. It's better to do it on a grassroots level with my position. Through my perception. But I appreciate it if you share it anywhere. It's all right with me. You share it wherever you want. It's a public channel. <clears throat> All the channels that are more successful than this channel don't talk about quantum grammar. They don't talk about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And if they do, they only talk about it on a cursory level. And they, talk, they show like examples of how they do something, but they don't show the why. And 
nine times out of ten when they show the how, they're showing it wrong. With regards to the mechanics uh, of correct sentence structure. Just putting that out there. And I can prove that. I can prove that. You show me something where you think someone's teaching correct sentence structure, and I can 99.9% .9 guarantee you that I can point out something they're doing wrong. That, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, is not an ego thing on my part. It is what it is, and no one's been able to prove me wrong. I don't care if it's a syntax learning center. I don't care if it's Mark Lowercase K. I don't care if what's that other guy's name that tries to claim all the same titles Russell claims that grievous guy. I don't care if it's him. I don't care if it's Russell himself. I don't care who it is. I can show you that they're not using correct grammar. So if you don't believe me, step up. JasonMatthewG17 at gmail.com. Send me your links to these teachers, and I'll tell you. I'll do a video on it. Show me their courses. Oh, my gosh. What was that one guy that was, uh, I did a reaction video to to his uh, website where he was claiming to teach correct sentence structure and he charged, he was charging one million dollars for a syntax course. One million dollars. Because he knows nobody's going to buy that bullshit. <laughs> Well, thanks everybody for the participation. Not one grammar question. Who could have predicted it? Who could have predicted no one asking a grammar question? Certainly not me. I've been smoking too much of the hopium, I guess. Thinking, wow, people are actually learning this and they're going to ask me questions because they have... These things on their mind because correct sentence structure is so vital and critical to their everyday existence and the existence of their loved ones that they're going to ask these questions. <sighs> I know that. That's cool. But if you're a member like Rosvon and like uh, April and Jason, thank y'all for your memberships. You're going to continue to get content and live streams and things like that. Hopefully we can get all the members together and we can have like a, a big live stream with all the members. That would, that would be really cool, I think. But I, I never get more than three or four members at one time. And I realize that's partially, you know, on me because I don't have a steady screen, uh, streaming schedule. Which, like most of you, I do have a busy life. And it's hard to tell when I can do it and when I can't do it. For me, the psychology is like a catalyst for learning the grammar. Can't remember big chunks until I learn the respective peach it lesson. I don't know what P I C H E T E is. I have a question about the syntax mechanic of the pronoun. Oh, psyche lesson. Dharma Science Radio has a question about the syntax mechanics of the pronoun. Are you with the volition of sharing that uh, question, or are you going to keep it all to yourself? <clears throat> all right, I'll wait. You know, that, that's like... <clears throat> my son, <clears throat> when he wants me to wants to approach me about something, he'll say, "Can I ask you a question?" And I think he does it just to mess with me because I'm like, "I don't know. Can you ask me a question? Are you physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually capable of asking me a question, son?" 
I can't answer that for you. Either that or you can just skip all that and just ask the question. But I can mess with him because I do have a trust count with him. He is my son. I can take that liberty with him. That's an instance where, as a parent, if he's not asking for help, I can step over that line and give him help even though he didn't ask for it because he's my son. We have that type of relationship. I would never do that with someone on the internet that I've never met uh, face to face. All right, Dharma Science Radio, we are awaiting your question and then I will answer that question and then shut it down. So we're waiting on you, bro. Well, I don't want to misgender you. I don't know if you're male or female, so I'll just say Dharma Science Radio, I am awaiting on your question and then I will answer your question and then I will bring this to a close. And I'm very appreciative of the fact that you do have a question specifically relating to grammar, because it's a very rare occurrence on here. <clears throat> thank you, James Alexander. I appreciate that. And thank you for your membership. See, members, tier two members like James and Razvan and April and Jason... They're still going to be getting content coming into the new year because they are tier two members. So that's something to take into consideration, folks. If you want to keep getting new content and live streams and Q&As and things like that, consider becoming a tier two member and contributing to the life of this uh, channel. When Santa trespass your chimney, will you activate your domicile contract? Hardy, hard, hard. I have seen from the conjunction mini class that only a tangible word or a break in the continuity of evidence can come before the pronoun. I've also seen a 404 syntax scenario in the conjunction mini class. Okay. Is that the setup to your question? <clears throat> what is your question, Dharma Science Radio? Please ask the question. Keep in mind, I don't know the sentence you're talking about. So keep that in mind when you ask your question. Well, if you don't have a specific question, then perhaps... More study is um, necessary on your part so that you can ask a specific question. Because if you don't know exactly what it is you're asking, it usually means, obviously, you don't have closure on it and more study is necessary. More thinking about it is necessary. So I guess I would advise that. Or... If you, if you want to get closure on this grammar, you can contact me, Jason at g 17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. Those are always available for those who are serious about the grammar, want to get closure on it in a timely fashion, and are committed to getting closure on it. <clears throat> you did originally say you had uh, a question about the pronoun, yet I don't see any questions. So I'm not sure, like, is it a yes or no question? <clears throat> How can a non-tangible conjunction go before the pronoun? You have answered your own question because a conjunction is a conjunction and a pronoun is a pronoun. Non-tangibility and tangibility has to do with the syntax values of a word that's being banked. A conjunction is a conjunction. It's and or or. They're both non-tangible. An incorrect sentence structure in the fiction right? And and or are considered non-tangible. But so are of and the and for and with and by and so on and so forth. 
So with correct sentence structure, we give closure to those parts of speech and we give closure to their functions. And the conjunction is the function of a neutral bridge that can come between, and I've said this ad nauseum, in correct sentence structure, it can come between two facts or it comes between two position loadial fact phrases. And in the fiction, it can come, it can serve as a bridge and come between two adverbs, verbs, adjectives, or pronouns, or it can serve as a bridge between any of the five syntax scenarios. And I've said that over and over again. So I hope this adds clarity to why that happens. You can have a one, three, zero, three, four. You can have a three, four, zero, four. You can have a one, two, zero, one, two. You can have a one, two, zero, two. You know, the list is endless. It just depends upon the context and your closure on the grammar, which again, if you would like complete closure on the grammar, the best place I know of is my classroom and applying for a correct sentence structure workshop if you're serious about it, which I'm always available. JasonMathG17 at gmail.com and also uh, Dharma Science Radio. Please include your full correct name and not a nom de guerre. I do appreciate your question. I hope I've helped you. Thanks, everybody. Gotta go. Getting a phone call. I appreciate everybody being here. Again, the conjunction is a neutral condition of state that can serve as a bridge in the fiction between any of the five syntax scenarios or adverbs, verbs, adjectives, and pronouns. Uh, ooh, Ian Dane of the Lindblom. For the Ian Dane of the Lindblom, for the record. Ian, you would not put a for the after an of the. Even though there's a comma there, that would not, that is not correct. And also, RE is a particle of negation. We would not use the word record in a correct sentence structure as a fact. And you would have to put a full stop at the end. Just say it. But thanks for the comment. And again, if you want to learn correct sentence structure, Ian, feel free to contact me at the email address uh, that I gave you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, Contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.